What is up guys? Welcome on back into the channel. So last year when NBA 2K22 came out, I made this video where I took the guys from Clickbait Sports and put them into NBA 2K22 and simulated their entire career. If you don't know what Clickbait Sports is, first off, what are you doing with your life? Second, it's five YouTubers, Scooter McGruder, Urinating Tree, Five Point Vids, Tom Grossi, and Brandon Perna. They get together every week on their channel and they just, you know, talk sports and do goofy stuff. So it's a great show and I put them into 2K last year, simulated their whole careers, and just kind of followed what happened. So now that NBA 2K23 is out, I asked you on Twitter, should I do this again? And well, Brandon Perna from That's Good Sports said, yes. So Perna, you're getting what you asked for. This is the NBA 2K23 clickbait sports career simulation. All right, so here we are in the draft class that we have created. I went ahead and just grabbed the most downloaded uh, 2023 draft class. So you've got Victor Wimbanyama, Scoot Henderson, uh, Nick Smith Jr., Anthony Black, and a few other, uh, all the prospects that are going to be in this next year NBA draft. And I added my created versions of the clickbait sports guys. They're pretty similar to the same versions I created last year. Again, we're going to start them all off at 19 years old, 80 overalls, and give each of them 99 potential. So here we have Tom Grossi at the small forward, 6'7", 215 pounds, 80 overall. You can see he has an A plus three pointer, A mid, B inside shot. Uh, not the greatest defender in the world, but he does have that 99 potential. Next, we have Scooter Magruder, the center, six foot 11, 276 pounds, 80 overall, a two way inside the arc score with 15 total badges. Can hit the mid range jumper at A plus, a C plus three, but I would expect that to go up as his career progresses. A inside defender. B rebounder, so he's going to be a beast in the paint. Five point fits at six foot four is a shooting guard, 200 pounds, three level score with nine total badges, and A plus three point shot coming into the league. Brandon Perna, the point guard at six foot, 185 pounds, 13 total badges, a two way inside out playmaker, A minus three, but A perimeter D and A playmaking, along with a B minus physicals and B plus basketball IQ. And then finally, we have Urinating Tree at the power forward, six foot nine. 250 pounds, 19 years old, 21 total badges, two-way dimer. Not the best offensive player you see here, but A plus inside D, A perimeter D, A minus playmaking, B minus rebounding, and then A minus basketball IQ. So we're going to go load up the draft and see how these guys perform and if anyone can end up being the number one pick over Victor Wimbanyama and Scoot Henderson. All right, so let's go ahead and load in the draft class here. We are in the modern era right now. Um, but if you do want to see me do this with one of the other eras, whether it be the Magic Bird, the Jordan, or the Kobe era, let me know down in the comments here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the original mock drafts. They do have Wimbanyama going number one for Draft Express, Tree going second, Perna third, and then Scooter Magruder going six, five points going eighth, and then where is Grossi? All the way down at 12 to the Knicks. All right, so here we are at the end of season one. Doncic wins MVP, but we don't really care about any of this because we are just trying to get to the off season here. All right, so here we are at the end of season one. The Clippers win the NBA Finals with Paul George being Finals MVP here, sweeping the Cavs. But we don't really care about any of that. We just want to get to the draft lottery to see who is going to have these top picks. And it looks like the Knicks end up with the number one overall pick. So they have a chance at either getting one of the clickbait guys or Victor Wimbanyama. Spurs come in at two, Pacers three, Rockets four, and then the Pistons round out the top five. So let's go ahead and hop to the NBA draft and see who is going to get our guy. So the first overall pick with the Knicks, and it is going to be Victor Wimbanyama going. So none of the clickbait guys go number one overall this year but perna going number two overall to the spurs so i am actually curious i did not think to check the mock drafts but yeah perna projected at number two by draft express tree was projected number two by 2k and then perna projected number two by nba.com let's check out what they're saying his ceiling is andre miller Tremendous leaping ability will help him crash the boards. Good on-ball defender, can get steals here and there. A defensive stopper, one of the best man defense players available. But a poor finisher through traffic, partially due to lack of dunking ability. And in 33 games in college, averaged almost 24 points a game and almost 20 assists a game. Wow. Hit 44, 37, and 84 shooting splits. So, 
Really good player. He goes number two overall, the highest drafted of the clickbait guys. I believe he was last year uh, when we did this. He went number one overall. So second year in a row, he's the top draft pick here. Now we have the Pacers on the clock, and they draft Urinating Tree. So last year they got, I believe it was Scooter, but now they get Urinating Tree. So he's going to be going to the Pacers. Let's check out his stats. And his ceiling is Hall of Fame. Floor is Kevin Looney. Looks to have one of the highest upsides in the draft. Very good at taking contact at drives due to fantastic upper body strength. Has the ability to be a great shot blocker at the next level. Vertical could be better. Second jump is straight up bad. Not the best three-point shooter. Needs work. Has a tendency of missing the wide open man a little too often. And in college, 33 games, 18.7 points, 14 rebounds, 3.5 assists, 2 steals, 5.5 blocks on 45, 33, and 58% shooting. He's got to get that free throw percentage up, I think. All right, number four overall pick to the Rockets, and it is Tom Grossi Posse Packer. A proven scorer, Grossi led the nation in scoring last year at Wisconsin Green Bay, averaging 33.5 points a game. So Draft Express had him going 12 to the Raptors. 2K had him going 15th to the Nets. And then NBA.com also had him going 12th to the Raptors. And ceiling is Larry Bird. Floor is Zaire Williams. Can really throw it down sometimes. Highlight dunks, pump up the team. Has his rough spots, but a solid player overall. Keen sense of knowing what to do with the ball and when to do it. Doesn't have good low post ability. Tends to get out muscled too easily when rebounding and lacks consistency with his floor awareness in defensive situations. Averaged 33.5 points a game, 7.5 rebounds, 5 assists, 1.5 steals, 1.5 blocks on 49, 47, 80% shooting splits. So there's three of the clickbait guys off the board right there. So all that's left is 5 point vids. And Scooter Magruder, now we have the Pistons up at number six. And they go with Gigi Jackson from South Carolina. So Scoot Henderson, also still on the board, by the way, as the Jazz come up at number six. And they are going to take Scooter Magruder to replace Rudy Gobert. And with a time of 3.45 seconds, Scooter Magruder wowed the scouts in attendance at the draft combine with his electrifying three-quarter sprint time and his ceiling is Pau Gasol floor is Mike Gaminski it's the three with some consistency one of the best prospects posting up has a knack for knowing where to be on defense isn't someone that you can rely on to get steals poor vertical ability and poor reflexes but average 28 points a game nine and a half rebounds three and a half assists one and a half blocks on 52 41 and 88 percent shooting so 88 percent from the free throw line as a center is really really good so uh should be pretty good there, especially with Rudy Gobert being traded away from the Jazz. So the last one on the board now is Five Point Vids, and he is going to have to continue to wait as they take Cameron Whitmore. Again, Scoot Henderson still on the board, by the way. Now the Thunder at number eight, and they will take Five Point Vids with the eighth overall pick. So all five of the clickbait guys go in the top ten. Questions are surrounding Josh Giddey's impending free agent status and whether or not he will resign. Regardless of that outcome, I really like Five Point Vids and his long-term outlook as an NBA prospect. His ceiling is Vernon Maxwell on a floor of Damian Lee. Rarely needs the help of a double team, plays solid man defense, decent handle, can generate good looks against average defenders, and his shooting range is only limited by the size of the court. No significant weaknesses. So that's the first time we've seen that. 28.7 points a game, 6.5 rebounds, 6 assists, 43-43-82 shooting split. So all of the clickbait guys are off the board. I am curious when Scoot Henderson, and there he goes to the magic there at number nine. All right, so here we are at the start of season one. The Thunder have five-point vids coming off the bench as the sixth man here. The Jazz are starting Scooter Magruder at the center. The Pacers have Urinating Tree coming off the bench as the sixth man. Rockets, they have Tom Grossi starting at the three for them. And then the Spurs are starting Brandon Perna at the point guard. So a lot of these players jumped up a little bit in overall because of storylines and progression and stuff. So Perna is actually going to start as an 85 overall to start his rookie season. Just absolutely incredible. And then I think the rest of the guys were all like 79, 80. Um, Gruder's up to an 81. And then Tree is still at an 80. So let's go ahead and see how they do in their rookie season here. All right, so here we are at the end of season one. Luka Doncic wins MVP with a almost 40-point triple-double average. 
And Victor Wembanyama ends up winning Rookie of the Year, averaging almost 20 points, 9.5 rebounds, 2 assists, 1.8 steals, 2.7 blocks. Tom Grossi ends the season 15.8 points a game, 3 rebounds, 1.7 assists, 47, 46, 80 shooting splits. Scooter Magruder started all 82 games for the Jazz, 12.5 points, 8.5 boards, 4 assists, 1.5 blocks, 46, 35, 85 splits. Urinating Tree. For the Pacers, 7 points, 6 rebounds, 9 assists, 1 steal, 1 and a half blocks, 40, 28, and 56 shooting splits. He has got to get better at shooting. But Urinating Tree and Scooter Magruder do make all-rookie first team, and Tom Grossi makes all-rookie second team. 5-point vids averaged almost 14 points, 2 and a half rebounds, 2 assists on 51, 47, and 85 shooting splits. And then Perna also had a good year, 14 and a half points, 3 and a half rebounds, 7 assists, on 42, 38, and 83 shooting splits. So in the first year, we only had two of our teams make it to the playoffs. You have five-point vids with the Thunder as a five-seed in the West, and then Tree with the Pacers as a six-seed out in the East. And we'll see if either of them can even advance. No, the Pacers get knocked out in five, but the Thunder do get knocked past the first round. They get knocked out in six in the second round. So no one winning a championship the first year. And then... Uh, the Timberwolves end up sweeping the Cavs to win the NBA Finals. Carl Anthony Towns is your Finals MVP. LeBron James, Russell Westbrook, and Carmelo Anthony all get inducted into the Hall of Fame. Oh, and it looks like Scooter has some help on the way as the Jazz sign Jalen Brown. The Pacers keep Tyrese around, so the Tree's best player isn't going anywhere. All George ends up going to the Lakers like he was supposed to all those years ago. Start of Season 2 here, and the only one not starting going into Season 2 is 5-point bids. Now moved down to the 7th man in the rotation. But, I mean, when you look at this Thunder team with 85 overall, Chet Holmgren, Andrew Wiggins, Josh Giddy, and Shea Gilgis-Alexander, I mean, you can kind of understand why he's not starting yet. All right, end of Season 2, Jason Tatum wins MVP, averaging over 39 points a game. Amari Bailey gets Rookie of the Year. And none of the clickbait guys get the awards. Do any of them make All-NBA? And it doesn't look like it. And no one on the All-Defensive teams either. So Trees Pacers are in the play-in over here on the east side. Let's see who's on the west. And we have a matchup for the first time here in the playoffs between Scooter Magruder and Tom Grossi's Rockets. Let's actually simcast this one, see how it goes. If it's close, we may hop into it. Jazz take an early lead. Rockets fighting back. This may be a close one. We may get to hop into this one. We go to the fourth, and it looks like the Jazz are starting to run away with it. Four-point game. Oh, one-point game. We're hopping into this one. All right, Rockets looking to inbound, and it goes over to Bogdanovich, and I don't see Tom Grossi in the game. I see Scooter in the game right now, and it looks like that's Derek White just puts up a shot to give the Rockets the lead, their first lead of the night. And Grossi is back in the game now here, and he's going to let Mitchell get open. He doesn't take the shot, gives it up to Kyle Anderson, and he's going to try and work here, trying to find something open. Gives it to Terry Rozier, who drives, and doesn't get the shot to fall. Rebound by Christopher. He's got it on the corner. No, he's going to put up a three. No good. Bad shot there. Kyle Anderson rebounds. Mitchell now down low to Magruder, and he's going to get the easy lay-in, and he's going to tie the game up with 47 seconds left. Scooter Magruder has tied the game. Rossi over there in the corner. Green gets the screen. Driving. Jabari Smith wide open on the outside for three, and he hits it with 15 seconds left, and the Rockets take the lead. All right, last chance now for the Jazz trying to get it in. Got to get it in quick. Anderson over to Rozier, down by three. 13 seconds left. Rozier just going to fire deep. No good. Rebound Scooter. He's going to pass it out. Mitchell, three, open, hits it. He hit it. Grossi was slow closing out. And Mitchell puts it in. Timeout. A tie game now with five seconds left. Tied at 126. The Rockets with the ball. A chance to win it and move on in the playoffs. Get it into Jalen Green. He's going to drive. Tries to put up a three at the buzzer. And it's in and out. No good. We're going to overtime. And the Jazz have the ball. Are we going to see some more late game heroics here for the Jazz? Anderson into Colin Sexton. Five seconds left. 
Guarded by White. Gonna drive. Gonna put up a shot. No, it's blocked by Jabari Smith. And that is it. The Rockets win it. They eliminate the Jazz. And they are moving on to the first round of the playoffs. Clutch game by Jabari Smith down the stretch. Jalen Brown finishes with 36 points. Scooter McGruder, 25 points, 13 rebounds, one block, three assists in 40 minutes, 10 of 15 from the field, 5 of 9 from 3. No free throws attempted in the game. Tom Grossi on the other side, 36 minutes, 21 points, 4 rebounds on 7 of 10 shooting, 5 of 8 from 3, 2 of 3 from the line. And it looks like the Jazz end up winning in the second game of the play-in, so they actually get to be the 8th seed now going up against the Clippers. And now five-point vids will go up against Tom Grossi in the first round of the playoffs. And the Pacers ended up losing both games in the play-in, so they are eliminated. So going to be interesting to see how this first round goes. And Thunder take game one. They take game two. Take game three. And it looks like it's going to be a no. Houston takes a game and avoids the sweep. But the Thunder do end up eliminating the Rockets here to move on. But the Jazz up 3-1 on the Clippers. And it looks like they will eliminate the one seed. Wow, so Scooter comes up big here in this one. But now two teams in this second round. Will they move on to face each other in the conference finals? It's 1-1 in both series right now. Now both teams down 2-1. Scooter's Jazz able to tie it up as the Thunder are down 3-1. Are they going to get eliminated? No, they stave off elimination. Now it's a tight series 3-3 as the Jazz are now down 3-2 to Denver. And the Jazz end up getting eliminated in six. They blow a two to one lead. And the Thunder beat Dallas in a game seven to move on. So now five points getting close to getting a championship here. Now he's in the conference finals against Denver. Down 1-0. Now 1-1. 2-1 now. 3-1. One game from the finals. Denver wins another one. And that will do it. The Thunder move on to the finals. Shea Gilgis Alexander gets... Western Conference Finals MVP is Gigi Jackson, the Rookie of the Year from last year with the Pistons, who I believe got picked over five points in the draft, gets Eastern Conference Finals MVP to lead the Pistons. So two young players that we saw in that draft now going up against each other here. Let's see how five has been doing for the Thunder here. And he's been averaging... About 12 points a game, 3 rebounds, 2.5 assists, 40 from the field, 44 from 3, 73 from the free throw line. He's not been shooting free throws very good here in the playoffs. Here we are in the finals. Thunder take game 1. They lose game 2. Take game 3. Take game 4. Are we about to see 5-point vids win himself a championship in just his second year in the league? And it looks like it's going to happen. No, the Pistons come back. It's a close game here. Now they actually lead by five. Now it's a one-point game. Minute 49. Let's see if Fives can finish it off and get his team a championship here. Oh, I did not realize the Pistons got Kyrie Irving somehow this year. And they also have Cade Cunningham, Jaden Ivey, DeAndre Hunter. They have a really good team. And Fives has 11 points here in game five. I don't see him on the court currently. Actually, no, he's over there in the corner. They got him playing the final minutes here. As Irving's going to drive, try to put one up. No good. Shea hit with the board. Here come the Thunder. Down one. Over to Trey Mann. Down to five-point Vince who puts it up. And it's in. And he gives the Thunder the lead. Screen here from Robinson. Sadiq now over to Robinson. Who's going to put it in. And the Pistons go back up by one. Kyrie gets the screen from Robinson. Going to drive. Looks to put it up. No, it's blocked. Blocked by Chet. And there you go, Shea has it up to five points, puts up the shot, and no good. Wanted to try and give them the bigger lead. Now it's Kyrie working on five points, who goes down, but it doesn't matter. Kyrie way off the mark with the shot. Up to five points now. Looking, working on Kyrie there in the corner, gives it up to Shea. Here come the Pistons now. Kyrie going to get past Shea, and he's going to lay it in. Takes the lead with 20 seconds left. Detroit trying to stay alive and force a game six. Boku inbounding here. Shea with the ball working on Kyrie. Gives it down to Boku who cuts and slams it in. And they take the lead now. 17 seconds left. Timeout Detroit. Kyrie now only three seconds left. Trying to put look for some space. Puts up a shot at the buzzer and it's no good. I don't know what happened there, but it doesn't matter. The Oklahoma City Thunder are champions. In just his second year in the league. And the Thunder do what 
Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, and James Harden couldn't and get them their first championship since moving to Oklahoma City. There it is, the Thunder champs you see. Five points there over to the side. Five points finishes the game. 13 points, three rebounds, three assists, and two turnovers on 28 minutes. And the Thunder are NBA champions. And Josh Giddy actually ends up getting finals MVP. 14 points a game, eight rebounds, 8.8 assists. Wow. As I'm recording this, by the way, the Packers and Giants just played in London and the Giants ended up beating the Packers. Oh my gosh. Oh. Yeah, five points is going to be bragging about that for a while. And the Thunder end up beating the Nuggets in five. Rockets take some seven, but they eliminate the Pelicans. And Scooter, as the seven seed, knocks off the Clippers. And he'll be facing Tom Grossi and the Houston Rockets in the second round here. So let's see how we got. It's 2-1, now 3-1. Is Scooter going to upset Grossi? And he does. The Jazz, the seven seed, are in the conference finals. And we'll see five points vids and the Thunder do advance. So we've got a showdown between a couple of our clickbait boys here in the Western Conference Finals against the one seed and the seventh seed. That should be a very interesting series. The Thunder take game one, take game two. Are they going to end up sweeping? It looks like it, and they do. So Scooter makes a good run. But in the end, the Thunder are too good. They sweep, and it looks like we're going to have a, a rematch. Yes, we will, of the Thunder and the Pistons, GG Jackson going up against Shea and five points in the finals again. Do the Thunder repeat or do the Pistons get revenge? It looks like the Pistons get revenge going up 3-0 and 4-0. They sweep them. The Thunder just no answer for the Pistons there. Wow. All right, going into year four, five points at an 82. Magruder jumps up two to an 85. Urinating Tree jumps up three to an 87. Tom Grossi up 1 to an 86, and then Brandon Perna up 1 to an 89 overall now. End of year 4, and Scoot Henderson wins MVP. Wow, pretty interesting to see someone from this draft class now uh, winning MVP. But yet again, we have a 1-7 matchup in the Western Conference Finals, but here we are, Game 7 back in OKC here. Thunder with an early lead. They're up big, up by almost 30. Now it's a 16-point lead, now a 12-point lead. Ooh, now just a 4-point lead. The Rockets have come all the way back, and they take the lead here. But the Thunder now running away with it here, and they will win it. The Rockets are eliminated. Are tied and I, I accidentally hit simulate late round. I didn't mean to do that, but the Magic end up winning it in seven. Scoot Henderson, 22 points, 11 assists, and the Thunder lose in the finals for the second straight year. Y Leonard and Damian Lillard are inducted in the Hall of Fame, and five point bids ends up taking a one year, two million dollar deal with the Lakers. So a former NBA champ with still 13 badges, including Hall of Fame, Corner Specialist, Limitless Range, and Slippery Off-Ball, is playing a one-year prove-it deal. Wow, I was not expecting that. And Scooter Magruder also changing teams here. Signs a one-year, $12 million deal with the Clippers. Wow, so a couple of our guys changing teams already here so far. And we interesting to see what happens after these guys' one-year deals run out. And finally, here in year five, we have our first of the clickbait guys making an all-star team. It's Scooter Magruder, now in 2028, he is a reserve, but averaging 22 points a game, eight rebounds, five assists on 48, 44, and 94% splits and we also have our first guy making an all nba team urinating tree makes all nba third team averaging 14 points seven and a half rebounds nine assists two steals on 42 33 and 57 percent splits so the thunder have now made it to four straight finals but only have one championship to show for it the scooter re-ups with the clippers on a three-year, $105 million deal. And Vids ends up signing another one-year deal, this time for $20 million. Still at an 84 overall, but goes to the Minnesota Timberwolves this time. End of Season 6, Tree makes All-NBA third team yet again. 15.5 points, 7.5 rebounds, 10 assists, 40-33, 63% from the free throw line. So his best free throw shooting year of his career now. Five points with far and away the best year of his career. 23 points, three rebounds, 
2.7 assists, 48, 43, 84 shooting splits in 33 minutes, the most he's ever had in his career. Kevin Durant and James Harden both go into the Hall of Fame. And the only free agent this year was Five Point Bids, who re-ups with the Timberwolves on a four-year, $126 million deal. So after a couple of freelance years, he finds a home in Minnesota. We do have Bids and Perna facing off against each other in the play-in here. The Thunder are back to being the one seed in the West. The Rockets, the four seed. Clippers, the two seed. And the Pacers are in the play-in yet again. So let's... And going up against New Orleans, the reigning champs here. Does Brandon Perna have it in him? And it does not look like it as he loses in five. So all our guys are out of the playoffs. But here we are now in 2030. And Brandon Perna makes his first All-Star Game appearance in, what is this? Four, five, six, seven, eight. Year eight, averaging 27 points, 10 assists, five rebounds on 40, 35, 86 splits, getting 38 minutes a game. And Brandon Perna, in his first year as an All-Star, also makes All-NBA first team, finishes the year 28 points a game, five rebounds, 10 and a half assists, 41, 35, 88 splits. And we'll simulate through round two, and it looks like the Clippers get eliminated again, but Tom Grossi with the Rockets looking to move on to the finals if they can get past the Pelicans. And yep, it looks like Five-point game, now a nine-point game. Yep, that's going to do it. The Pelicans overcome the deficit, knock off Grossi and the Rockets. Turner will re-sign with the Spurs. 40 years, 222 million. So Scooter goes and joins a Kings team that has Scoot Henderson, the three-time champion and former MVP, along with Kendall Brown, 28 years old, but 92 overall. Pretty good player, so... Would be an interesting team. Maybe we see another one of our guys get themselves a ring this year. And this time the Cavs actually end up winning it. Darius Garland finals MVP. So Scooter re-signs with the Kings on a three-year $121 million deal. And then Tree comes back to the Pacers four years $188 million a year. So now Scooter going up against his former team, the Clippers, with his new team, the Kings, to try to get to his first NBA finals. They take game one. Take game two. They're up 3-0, and will it be a sweep? No. Now a 3-2. Are they going to bow a 3-0 lead? No, they won't. As Scoot Henderson gets Western Conference Finals MVP and will be facing his former team, the Magic. Let's see. Kings take game one. Take game two. They take game three, and they sweep. And we finally get another clickbait guy with a ring. Scoot Henderson wins Finals MVP, but Scooter Magruder joins the super team and wins himself a title against the Magic. Urinate and Tree, another all-NBA third-team season. 15 points, 8 rebounds, 8.7 assists. 42-34-61 splits there. And now going up against the Hornets in the finals. Hornets take game 1. Kings even it up at 1-1. Now Hornets up 2-1. Five series after 4. Game 5 here in Sacramento. Pivotal game. With it tied at two apiece here. It's going to be a close one as we head into the fourth now. And it looks like it's a five-point game, six-point game. And the Kings end up taking it. Scooter puts up 30 points in only 30 minutes. Scooter ends up winning his second championship. Puts up 23 points in the closeout game. And Scoot Henderson gets finals MVP. So fives versus Scooter in the Western Conference Finals here. Game one goes to Sacramento. Game two goes to Sacramento. Sacramento still has not lost a single game in the playoffs. They are about to sweep their third straight round. They have swept their way straight to the finals. Is this one of the most dominant teams of all time? Quite possibly as Scoot Henderson puts up 35-11 and 11 in the Western Conference Finals as he did win MVP this season. And he has this team looking hot right now. Very, nope, there it is. The first loss of the playoffs there. But they take game three, now up 3-1, and it's going to be a 4-1 gentleman sweep there. They win back-to-back -back titles. So Scooter and the Kings win three championships in four years now as Scoot Henderson gets, what is this, his sixth finals MVP? Wow. Is Scoot Henderson the new coach? Another trip to the finals could be in the cards for Sacramento if they can get past L.A. here. They're up 3-1. Are they going back? 3-2. Two. 
And they are going back to the final. Scoot Henderson, another Western Conference Finals MVP. This time going up against the Nets team. Not sure really who's on this Nets team. Chucky Mercer, Amari Bailey, and Jonathan Kaminga are the main guys on that team. But Scooter, Frederick Posey, Rob Snow, Kendall Brown, and Scoot Henderson still here for the Kings. Trying to win another one. Trying to go for three straight as well as four in five years. They lose game one. Take game two. Take game three. Now up 3-1, and they will win another. Kings close out the Nets to win their fifth NBA title. Scoot Henderson with his seventh championship, his seventh finals MVP. Now down 2-1, down 3-1. Is this where it ends? And it does. The reign of the Kings ends here. The Clippers knock them off in five. So the only hope now is for Perna, who comes back from a 3-2 deficit. He's in the Western Conference Finals, going up against the Clippers as the two-seed Spurs. Can he make it to his first NBA Finals of his career? Down 2-1 to the Clippers here. Now down 3-1. 3-2. Does he have a shot? No. Cannot force a Game 7. It's Clippers, Sixers. The Sixers end up taking it. So again, all five teams make the playoffs, but no first-round matchups. Each one of the four Western Conference team in a different matchup. So we could have all four matched up in the semifinals here if things break their way. Now 3-1 for both of those teams, and it looks like they will both move on. It'll be Scooter versus 5. Scooter and the Kings trying to make it back to the finals. 5 trying to get back there since he was in OKC year 2 when he won his championship. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen. We'll wait, maybe. Is there going to be a Game 7? No. In the NBA Finals here going up against the 76ers, they will take Game 1, take Game 2, take Game 3. Will it be a sweep? It will. They win another championship. Scoot Henderson continues to dominate along with Scooter Magruder going up against the Nets. Loses Game 1, loses Game 2, loses Game 3, now down 3-0. And they are going to get swept by the Nets. So Fives finally gets back to the Finals just to get swept. So a chance for them to go back to the finals. They're up 1-0, up 2-0, up 2-1, up 3-1 now, 3-2. Don't let them make a Game 7. They're back in the finals here. Scoot Henderson with Western Conference Finals MVP. Lose Game 1 to the Hawks. Take Game 2. Oh, lose Game 3. Now down 3-1. And they are going to lose in 5 as the Hawks take the title. And Scooter Magruder will retire after losing in the finals in five. A five-time champion, five-time All-Star, first-team All-Rookie, one of the all-time greats, part of one of the greatest championship runs, one of the greatest teams, dynasties in NBA history. I mean, he won five championships in seven years. Urinating Tree also retires. A four-time All-Star, four-time third-team All-NBA, 13-time first-team All-Defense, three-time second-team All-Defense, and then a one-time first-team All-Rookie. Jabari Smith Jr. also retires, a nine-time All-Star, and a Rookie of the Year back in 2023. Brandon Perna retires, a five-time All-Star, first-team All-NBA once, second-team All-NBA twice, third-team All-NBA once but that is it so it looks like Rossi and five are staying in the league we'll see if any of our guys made it to the hall of fame and perna does but tree and scooter don't surprisingly jabari smith josh giddy kate cunningham and paulo boncaro also make it brandon perna finished his career averaging 20.6 points a game 8.8 .8 assists 3.9 rebounds, 1.7 steals, a five-time All-Star, no championships, All-NBA first team once, All-NBA second team twice, NBA third team once. I am surprised that the other guys didn't make it. Like, Scooter, did he just not have the numbers? Like, what were his career averages? 17 points a game, 7 rebounds, 5.5 assists, 48, 43, 96 splits, and then Tree averaged... Oh, 12 points, 7.7 .7 rebounds, 9 assists a game. You would think that'd be enough to get him into the Hall of Fame. You would think five championships for Scooter would be enough to get him into the Hall of Fame. But no, it's not enough. By the way, Scoot Henderson's still hanging around, by the way. He do Urinating Tree does get his jersey retired by the Pacers. The Kings retire Scooters. Josh Giddy, 
Cade Cunningham, Jabari Smith get theirs retired. Perna gets his jersey retired by the Spurs, who he spent his entire career with. Your name tree also spent his entire career with the Pacers. Uh, Scooter jumped around a little bit. The five-point bigs now 37 years old with the Timberwolves at an 84 overall. And Tom Grossi leaves the Rockets after a career year where he averaged 20 or more points for the first time in his entire career. Leaves to join the Kings now that Scooter's retired. Grossi comes over to try to ring chase, try to get that one championship he's never been able to get in his career. We'll see how they do. Can they make it out of the first round? Grossi does not. He ring chases with the Kings and gets eliminated in the first round. And Fives goes out in the first round too. So no one is getting a ring. And is that going to be it? Scoot Henderson retires finally. The new GOAT, a six-time MVP, eight-time champion, 13 All-Star. Tom Grossi also retires with second-team All-Rookie. His rookie season put up 17 points a game his final year at 38 years old on 40, 43, 89 splits. Ended up averaging 16.7 points, four rebounds, three assists on 47, 44, and 89 splits in his career. And it looks like five points is going back for another season. Victor Wimbanyama also retires after losing in the finals. Did not get a championship. Was a one-time MVP after going number one in our draft class. So Victor Wimbanyama, GG Jackson, another guy that we saw a lot early on. Won a couple of championships. A two-time MVP. Was the fifth overall pick in the draft that had all of our clickbait guys. And then Scoot Henderson. Ended up going nine in that draft and becomes the GOAT. Six-time MVP, 13-time All-Star. Eight championships with eight finals MVPs. Gets his number retired by the Magic and the Kings. Tom Grossi with his jersey retired by the Rockets. At the age of 38, five points vid signs a one-year $27 million deal with the Clippers. After being in Minnesota for so long, over 10 years he spent there with the Timberwolves. Now one final year. All right, now his final year. In the league, Five Point Bids makes the playoffs with the Clippers, now facing his former team in the second round, who are the number one seed, and he gets eliminated by the Timberwolves. It would be hilarious if the Timberwolves win a title this year. They don't for Five Point Bids, and it will be. 20 years in the NBA, his final year average 16 points and almost five assists with the Clippers. And he winds up averaging almost 18 points a game, three rebounds, three and a half assists on 47, 44, 90% shooting. And his awards, a one-time NBA championship in his second year in the league. That will just about do it. Nick Smith Jr., Wallace Robertson, Amari Bailey, Cameron Whitemore, and Dariq Whitehead make the Hall of Fame. Five points is not going to the Hall of Fame. Um, but he does get a jersey retired by the Timberwolves. So last thing to do is take a look back at the history. Um, none of our guys end up winning an MVP award, I'm pretty sure. There's Doncic, Scoot Henderson won his first with the Magic here, and then won some more with the Kings here. Ended up winning four straight in five and six years before he retired. And then in terms of championships here, the first one we saw was with the Thunder with... Five points vids. They ended up going to three more and ended up losing those. That's when Scoot got his two with the Magic. He ended up getting one more before he would leave for the Kings to join with Scooter Magruder to form the super team that would go on to win so many. He won five in seven years with Scoot becoming Finals MVP in all of those. And then after that, we would they would get to one more, losing it to the Hawks. That's when Scooter and Scoot retired. And it looks like Anthony Edwards ends up being the all-time leading scorer in the NBA. LeBron James at two, Tatum at three. And Brandon Perna is the highest out of all of our guys at 40th with 30,000 career points. Five-point bids comes in at 44, just edging out Carmelo Anthony. Tom Grossi comes in at 70th, just behind Kevin Garnett and ahead of guys like Vince Carter with 25,000 career points. Scooter Magruder comes in at 75th, edging out guys like Damian Lillard and Reggie Miller. And then Urinating Tree isn't even in the top 100, which wasn't surprising. He, did, he never really had 
much in terms of scoring. But Tom Grossi does end up third on the all-time three-pointer list behind only Jabari Smith and Anthony Edwards with over 6,000 made threes. Remember in last year's video, he actually ended up being the all-time three-point king. Um, Brandon Perna ends up number seven on the list. Five-point bids ends up in the top 10 here. Urinating Tree ends up coming in at 51st all-time in career rebounds behind guys like Dirk Nowitzki, Sean Madison, Elgin Baylor, Patrick Ewing, LeBron James, and edging out guys like Pau Gasol, Jabari Smith Jr., and Dion Williamson. Career assist, LaMelo Ball is the new all-time leader. Scoot Henderson is third. Urinating Tree ends up 13th on this list. Perna comes in at 15. Tom Grossi ends up 36 on all-time minutes played. Arna's seventh most turnovers in his career. Five points vids tied for third most games played in a career after playing for 20 years. Urinating Tree ends up with the ninth most triple doubles in a career in front of guys like Jason Kidd, LaMelo Ball, and Giannis. But that's it for this video, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. In the end, not nearly as successful as the last year simulation where we had got like i think all but one of them made the hall of fame last year this year perna was the only one that made the hall of fame even though scooter won five championships what do you think about that do you think scooter magruder should have made the hall of fame after getting those five rings with the kings let me know down in the comments also if you have other ideas for videos like this that you would like to see on the channel let me know down there but again thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you all next time